Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told out of voice the radio. So today, I'm going to do something with which I have very much struggled. And that is bring you a list of the top 20 cards from Battle Styles. You see, Battle Styles has a lot of cards in, and I like a lot of these cards. So, you're going to see really good cards on here, like Primeape, which I think is a really good attacker that can really make a difference, didn't make the list. Uh, the new Durant, which is not quite as good as the old one, maybe I've left it off out of spite, I don't know, didn't make the list. That really cool Yamper that can be played to grab a Pokeball, the Great Ball back for me, a discard, wanted to put that on there, could not find the room. The Ore Beetle that lets you spam Stage 2s, I really want to be wrong about this one. None of these made the list. The only card I deliberately left off was Level Ball, because it is a reprint at the end of the day. And to be honest with you, Level Ball will probably end up being, if not the best, very close to the best card from the set. Lets you grab a Pokemon with 90 HP or less. But I don't think it deserves to be on the list because it's a reprint that didn't go away that long ago so i don't know i feel okay also ember i really wanted to put ember on the list but it just it didn't make the list and i'm sorry as always argue with me in the comment section in at number 20 we've got mean shao now i'm really happy about this this is my favorite card in the set hands down and this wasn't deliberate, incidentally. I didn't go, oh, well, it's my favourite. I'll stick it in a number 20. What I do is I look through the whole set and I make a little bit of a list and I adjust it as I'm going. And then I finish and I sit down, have a good look, make a few changes, look through the set again. And then I put numbers on. So I've got a big, long list of cards. And then I put it all in order. And then I start numbering them. And it turns out Mean Chow was naturally number 20. For two energy, you do 90 damage plus confusion and shuffle this and all cards attached to it into your deck don't forget that we've got rapid strike energy yes that's coming up later on the video which will pay this in one go whack something like a lily's poker doll in the active and your opponent is confused and even if they flip heads on confusion um yeah the the, the best they can do is take out a pokemon which isn't really a pokemon and doesn't give up a prize in their face in at number 19, we've got Golbat and Crobat. Now, Golbat, when you evolve a Pokemon, you draw two cards. Crobat, when you evolve, you draw three cards. And now you can easily look at this and go, well, hang on a second, Wossy. Why am I playing this over Manectric? Which just draws three cards when you evolve up into it. That's a fair point, incidentally. But also, right, it's really good. And if you play a scoop up net, you can play both of them back down and draw five cards. And I really like it. And I know it's a stage two and it might not end up working. But I think there is a huge amount of potential here in terms of having a bit of a nice draw engine. In at number 18, we've got Empoleon V. Now, Empoleon, the attack is very much meh, take it or leave it. 130, move an energy to the bench, fine. But the ability Emperor's Eye says that as long as this is active, your opponent's basic non-rule box Pokemon, non-V, non-GX, etc., don't have any abilities. And this will turn off a huge amount of support Pokemon that a lot of decks rely on. Things like Guru, things like Jirachi all get turned off. This could have a real impact. I feel pretty good putting this on the list. In at number 17, we've got Corviknight V Max. And this is one that I did not initially like, and I've had to I've had to be told off by a few people to, to put this on the list. You see, initially, it just looks like it, it's Ashian V, but does 10 more damage and gives up free prizes. But actually, it's so much more than that. Because We've got the new Bronzong in this set. Yeah, we'll get to it in a minute. Let's you move all your metal energy around the field. And we've got Cheryl in this set. Yes, it's coming up later. Which lets you heal all your evolved Pokemon at the cost of all the energy. And if you combine these three cards, you've basically got a 320 HP Pokemon that is unaffected by your opponent's abilities. That's what its ability does. That if you don't one-hit KO, it can just move the energy and completely heal. And now all of a sudden I look at it and I go, yeah, you know what? Maybe it's got something that Zashian just doesn't have. Crazy survivability. 
In at number 16, we've got Tower of Darkness, the very rare stadium draw engine. Now, it's only for single strike decks, but you can draw two cards if you discard a single strike card from your hand. Now, I suppose what you could do here is just play this with some random single strike cards to activate it, but that would be, um, frankly, a little bit dumb. Ah, uh, maybe dumb's too harsh. Suboptimal. Let's go for that. Frankly, this is a really good draw engine. If you're playing a single strike deck, I don't know why you're not having a little bit of a play around with this. It seems like a really fun idea indeed. In at number 15, we've got Flapple V. And I know this is one with which a bunch of people may disagree. I adore Flapple V. For one grass energy, 20 damage. And during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks cost two colorless energy more and i don't think this is a deck i think it is a fun little tech card and especially in online tournaments where deck lists are known or if you can guess your opponent's deck list you essentially whack this active when your opponent is out of energy they've got just enough energy to attack and win the game except now flapple's attacking and they don't have just enough energy to attack and win the game and then you win the game and that's why I like Flapple so gosh darned much. The, there is a VMAX. I don't like it anywhere near as much. In at number 14, we've got Phoebe. Not just the name of my niece. Also the name of a very good new supporter card. During this turn, damage from your Pokemon's VMAX's attacks isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, if you're playing a VMAX at the moment, you're probably going to have to play this card because Zamazenta exists. And Zamazenta's got an ability that makes it immune to VMAX Pokemon, which is a problem unless you're playing this. Or I could tell you about Decidueye, which admittedly sees a fair bit less play, but Decidueye has an ability that makes it immune to Pokemon Vs and GXs, including VMAXs and Tag Teams. So yeah, um, th this seems like it could be a really good supporter that will help you out in a bunch of matchups. In at number 13, we've got Cherim. And bearing in mind, I told you this was the worst of the pre-release promos. And it's coming in at number 13. Which I think goes to show you quite how much I really do genuinely like all of these pre-release promos. It's got an ability that just lets you attach as much grass energy as you like during your turn. But only to Pokemon that don't have a rule box. And this is an ability that we saw on Embor and it won Worlds. And we saw it on Blastoise and it won Worlds. And okay, this is slightly more restrictive, but it's also on a stage one. If we get a good partner, it's going to be amazing. Bunch of people have told me about the card that I have been hyping a little bit, Maractus. Which just lets you flip a coin for each energy attached to it and do damage for each heads. I like Maractus, but I'm not loving the flippiness of it, unfortunately. But there's the new Tapu Bulu, maybe. Does 160 damage and you've got to discard the energy, but then you can just reattach it. Maybe we don't have the perfect partner yet, but I think one day we will, and this will be amazing. In at number 12, we've got Bronzong. And Bronzong here, well, it, it's got another ability that we keep seeing being amazing. Just lets you move metal energy from one of your Pokemon to another. And this does a bunch of weird but cool things. Something like Zash and V, you can't attack two turns in a row with Brave Blade. So generally, you have to get out of the active and then back in the active. Or you have to have two Zashian with free energy on each. Both of which are awkward. So what you do here is you have a Zashian with free energy on and another Zashian. So all you need to do is get out of the active. And then you move the energy to the active. And then you're good to go. Sounds good to me. Or there's a whole Corviknight Cheryl combo I pointed out earlier. Any deck that can use Metal and or Colorless Energy is going to love Bronzong. And that's before we even mention Metal Saucer. Remember Metal Saucer attaches a Metal Energy from your discard to one of your bench Metal Pokemon? But you use this to attach to Bronzong, and then you can move it anywhere you like, so you get to Metal Saucer onto any Pokemon, essentially. I've already seen this winning with a bunch of different lists in Japan. I see no reason why this wouldn't just keep going.
In at number 11, we've got Tapu Coco V. Again, there is a VMAX, but I'm really looking at the V here. Although, to be fair, the VMAX gets automatic paralysis if you're behind in the game. That ain't to be sniffed at. But the reason I like the Pokemon V so much, free energy, 20 damage, plus 40 more for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. This can be used as a threat, i.e., put it down to your, or, you know, just make your opponent aware that it's in your deck. M maybe play a Pokemon communication and be like, I'm putting Tapu Koko V back in. And then either your opponent attaches less energy than they want to, that's good for you. Or your opponent attaches a bunch of energy and you get to do giant attacks with Tapu Koko, that's good for you. Either way, I'm kind of loving Tapu Koko. In at number 10, we've got my third favorite card in the set. It's Stoutland V. I adore Stoutland V. Four energy, 200 plus 30 to itself, I ain't getting excited about. But three energy, 40 damage? That's not good. Oh yeah, but if it knocks out a basic Pokemon, you take an extra prize. Well... Just powerful colorless energy and vitality band is going to put you up to 70. And that is getting most evolving Pokemon, Jirachi, Galarian, Zigzagoon, etc. But then we've got, you know, you attack and finish with Stoutland. It's colorless energy, so any energy acceleration will do. It takes extra prizes, which is always phenomenal. It can easily get up to 70 damage, which is a key number for little basic Pokemon. I really do believe that this Stoutland is going to be an absolute force. And even if no one else is playing around with Stoutland, you'd better believe that I'm going to be playing around with Stoutland. In at number nine, we've got Mustard. And I'm not picking which Mustard. Both Mustard. These are the ones that let you cheat a little bit. You see, what you do with Mustard is, if it's the only card in your hand, you draw five cards... After playing either a Rapid Strike Pokemon from your discard pile or a Single Strike Pokemon from your deck. And this means you can play something like the aforementioned Ember just from your deck as a Stage 2 and put it straight on the bench. We saw these before with Archie's Ace in the Hole and Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. And they were phenomenal cards. Archie's won Worlds. Maxi's was so good it ended up getting banned. I refuse to believe these aren't going to be phenomenal cards moving forward. Anytime you've got an evolved single strike or rapid strike Pokemon, this is going to have to be a serious consideration. It literally breaks the rules of the game. In at number 8, we've got Urshifu V Max. And again, I'm not choosing between them. And you can't make me. You see, I like both the Urshifu V Max. I did really just like the Rapid Strike, but the Single Strike is starting to grow on me. You see, the Rapid Strike, if you were on the bench and became active this turn, 150 damage for one energy. That's very powerful. Or free energy. Discard all energy from this Pokemon to do 120 to two of your opponent's Pokemon. But remember that Rapid Strike Energy will pay two of those free energy. And if you're behind on prizes, you could actually use Karate Belt to fairly easily pay this in one go. And being able to do 150 for one energy or 120 to two different Pokemon, that sounds pretty good to me. As for the Single Strike VMAX, free energy 100. But as we've seen with cards like Embor and Single Strike Energy... The amount of damage printed on a single strike card really is not the amount of damage they're going to be doing. And then 4 energy 270, and sure, you've got to discard all 4 energy. But we're going to see cards like Houndoom in a moment, which really mitigate this. And it's 270 damage, plus all your modifiers, and it goes through any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. This is kind of redonkulous. And a lot of the time, with all your modifiers, beatdown is going to be enough anyway. I have come around, and I like Single Strike Urshifu. I still prefer Rapid Strike, but I like Single Strike Urshifu. Coming in at number seven, we've got Cheryl. And we don't need to talk much about Cheryl. We've talked about Cheryl a bunch already. It heals your evolved Pokemon at the cost of losing the energy. There is a phenomenal combo here with Bronzong. Move the energy off. Heal with Cheryl, move the energy back. But frankly, what we've got here is a bunch of cool tricks. Either you're playing low energy Pokemon, so it really doesn't matter. You can just go for it. Or 
You can play around with stuff like Bronzong. It's really good. Cheryl's going to change some games. Now, I do think this is where we draw a little bit of a line. I like my list, but I understand that for some of you, the placing is going to look a bit all over the place. And I can't really blame you for that. There's a lot of good cards. It's hard to tell them apart. But I do think the top six is the top six here. In at number six, we've got Houndoom and Octillery. These are the stage one support single strike and rapid strike Pokemon that you are going to play in every single strike and rapid strike deck. Octillery lets you search for any rapid strike card you like. This could be a supporter card, Pokemon, energy, item, whatever. It's limited to once during your turn. Multiple Octillery will not give you multiple abilities, but it lets you search any type of card. It's ridiculous. But honestly, if I had to choose between them like I did when I ranked the pre-release promos, because remember these were both pre-release promos, I'm putting Houndoom above it. You see, Hound Doom lets you search your deck for a single strike energy and attach it. Yeah, you got to take two damage counters, nobody cares. You get to attach from the deck, which is always the best kind of energy acceleration. And it's not limited to once during your turn, and it does not replace your attachment for the turn. So let's say you've got three Hound Doom out, they're only stage ones. Well, now all of a sudden, I can actually use single strike Urshifu in one turn. And I'm doing an extra 60 damage. It is, um, it's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, the, these cards are going to see a huge amount of play. I mean, unless single and rapid strike decks are all trash, which they won't be. Yep. Expect to see these cards coming around. In at number five, we've got Fan of Waves. Now, Fan of Waves is weird because it's technically a rapid strike card. But the only real relevance is it means you can, like, search it with Octillery, which is cool, incidentally, and means this works really well as a one-off in Rapid Strike decks, but it's not really a Rapid Strike card like that. But it does let you put a special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokémon onto the bottom of their deck. No, it's not Crushing Hammer. It doesn't get rid of the energy. It just puts it back into their deck, and it's only for special, not basic. But, but also, it's not on a coin flip. It just works. It's energy denial. You better believe a lot of people are going to play this card. In at number four, we've got Bruno and Corinna, or as I like to call them, the new draw supporters. No, they're not going to be new staple draw supporters in every single deck, but they are new draw supporters, which is going to see, well, but both going to see a bunch of play. And as far as I'm concerned, that makes them top four cards in the set. These are going to see a lot of play in a lot of different decks. Again, they are technically single and rapid strike cards, but these are in no way, shape or form limited to single and rapid strike decks. Bruno lets you shove your hand into your deck and draw four cards. But if you had a Pokemon KO during your opponent's last turn, you draw seven cards instead. Long-time players will remember that Cynthia's Feelings was a very good card. And yes, I know Cynthia's Feelings got eight cards rather than seven after a KO. But this is still Shuffle Draw 7 after a KO. It's still great. Use a setup Pokemon in the early game. And then when you finally lose a prize, in comes Bruno to mop up. Corinna lets you draw until you've got six cards in your hand. It's a reprint of Bianca. And I know that a bunch of people look at this and go, oh, it's no good. And they look at it and go, well, it's Lily, but you don't get the extra turn one option. If you play Lily on turn one, you draw two, you've got eight. But the thing is, Lily saw a bunch of play and not just as a turn one option. And Bianca saw a bunch of play. So why would this not also see a bunch of play? Maybe we really do just have better options, but I am buying it, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't buying it. These are great cards. In at number three, we've got Single and Rapid Strike Energy. Again, you can't really separate these two cards out. They are phenomenal energy cards that are going to be a four of in any deck that can play them. So it doesn't seem sensible to really split them up. And we talked about both of these already. Single Strike Energy does an extra 20 damage when attached to a Single Strike Pokemon. That's ridiculous. Rapid Strike Energy counts as two energy, but it's only water and fighting. I've made that mistake before, I'm sorry, when attached to a Rapid Strike Pokemon. If you're playing a single or Rapid Strike deck, you are definitely going to be playing four of the respective card. You're just going to. And for that reason, they are top three cards. 
In at number two, we've got Victini V Max. And if anyone's wondering, this is my second favorite card in the set. Mean Chow number one, Victini V Max number two, Stoutland number three. Victini V Max, and there is a new Pokemon V, but it's not as good as the one from Sword and Shield. Play the one from Sword and Shield. But Victini V Max comes along with a two energy attack that does 220 damage to a Pokemon V. That's ridiculous. That is going to get a KO on almost any Pokemon V. If you tell me Zamazenta, I'm just going to remind you about Phoebe. And the thing is, it's for two energy. Now, pre-rotation, we've got Welder, and a whole bunch of people are going to go, you know what, Wossy, you're right. We got Welder pre-rotation. But surely this is going to be trash post-rotation. No, it's two energy. Use Turbo Patch before you evolve. Use Victini V's attack. Which, incidentally, Victini V Max also has, but use it on the Victini V. And it's also a fire and a colorless. Use Bronzong and Metal Sorcerer if you really want to. Turn two, KO on any Pokemon V, essentially. Yes. A lot of people do not seem to be believing me with Victini V Max. Just wait until you're starting to give up two prizes every turn from turn two. You'll see, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you'll see. Love Victini V Max. But in the number one, it's Krikatune. And my rule on this is really simple. If you give me a basic Pokemon with a draw ability, it's probably going to go in at number one. Because these always see the most play. Dedenne, Crobat, Oranguru, Jirachi. These always see a ridiculous amount of play. It's ridiculous. And incidentally, Krikatune is basically Oranguru. Draw till you've got three cards in your hand. If, however, you're active, you get to draw until you've got four. It's limited to once during your turn. But in a world where people play Oracorio, which is actually even a little bit weaker and gives up two prizes and sits on the bench and only works sometimes, why would this not see a huge amount of play? I refuse to believe this isn't going to see a ridiculous amount of play. Basic Pokemon with draw abilities always see a ridiculous amount of play which is when i was doing this list i put cricket you number one it's grass so it was one of the first cards i got to when looking through the set and it never strayed away from number one. i didn't even consider it there was no way this wasn't going to be number one so there we go ladies and gentlemen that's my top 20 from battle stars i probably could have done a top 30 but i think this video is long enough but i want to know what you think so let me know in the comment section would you go nuts be nice and then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.